check it out nice little red grouper here so anyways here's the deal my computer crashed <laughs> lost all the footage I was already getting ready to edit the cook clean portion which we shot a day or so ago and guess what I lost all of it so my computer's been acting up so I had to go buy a new computer today which is awesome because you know it is what it is now I have a backup they're gonna fix mine but why am I rolling this thing in my hands Lisa salary I hope I'm saying the last name right She's a wonderful subscriber who leaves a lot of really cool tips and that helps to release all the juices. That's what I'm doing. Anyhow, so what I'm doing is luckily I caught a couple of nice groupers. We're gonna redo this video. I'm gonna show you how to make the best grouper sandwich. One of my favorite things, even before the kids were born, every time I came to Florida, especially on this coast where you find a lot of these grouper, the grouper sandwich it's the first thing I ordered it was like get down here let's go get a grouper sandwich so figured out my own little recipe and it rocks so here we go guys we're just gonna flay this sucker up all right so now we just need to kind of feel where it is these guys have a really pronounced rib cage and there's not a whole lot of meat most people just come in and just cut it like that which is pretty much how it ends up but keep in mind the red grouper really gags too. Uh, they get a little parasite, but they're easy to pluck out of the meat. So when you go to the store and you buy red grouper fillets, they've the little parasites have been taken out. They're harmless. They don't do anything to the meat. I promise. They may look a little funky, but it's not going to affect anything. Um, all right, let's get to this. I like to start inside the skin because it'll dull your knife pretty quick. And this way here, you come from under. There's the ribs. Just like that. You come from under the skin and your knife stays sharper. All right, now we're gonna go against the backbone. You're gonna follow that all the way down. I'm gonna go underneath the skin again. Underneath there and then out through the tail Now my friend Ben told me this group grouper are not one that you want to leave the skin on and cook them that way It makes it taste really bad. I don't know why it's us. Uh, what else is like that the um, Soap fish which a lot of you guys may already know that's the snook. It got its name, soapfish, because if you leave the skin on when you cook them, yuck. So I don't know because I've never tried it. We're going up. There's the ribs. Now my friend is going to take these carcasses from these fish. See that? Those ribs come right literally to the skin. He's going to take these carcasses and make our fish head soup recipe which is awesome, so nothing goes to waste. See, there's one of the worms. This one isn't too bad. This one was out a little deeper than some of the other ones we caught. I know it's kind of yucky, but I'm gonna tell you what, guys, it has zero effect on the meat. It does nothing. Once you skin it, you can pull them out. You just go in with your fillet knife and cut them out of there. And you guys may notice I'm using my Dexter today. All right, so we're just going to start right here at the tail. They got a pretty stout skin, so you can grab a hold of it like this, guys, and work both ends. So you work your knife back and forth and pull on the skin, and boom, it's done. Look at that. So what I typically do is I'll hold it up to the light, and this, this is really clean. I'm not kidding you. Some of the other ones I've filleted have had probably a dozen of those little worms in there but this guy looks good so we're in good shape all right so here you go we're going to turn this puppy into the best grouper sandwich you've ever had wait a minute what did you just say 
Give me that camera. What it, if you... Because that computer cost me like $3,000 today. So if you're... What did you just say? This girl, I'm telling you. I deleted your clips so that I could get another grouper sandwich. I don't like you right now. <laughs> You love me. I love her. But you guys have been waiting for the, the cooking portion. I have to. <laughs> oh, I see how this goes. You know what? You're not getting any. Unbelievable. It was yummy the first time. <laughs> okay. I was ready to have a stroke when I lost all that stuff. It's not funny. You're getting... Oh, all right. Let's get to this. First thing we're doing here... We're just chopping up our ingredients for our homemade tartar sauce. I have got this little recipe. I've changed a lot of things over the years to just try and find something that works for us. And I got to tell you, what works for me is heat. Now, if you want to make the sauce hotter, just leave some seeds in one of the jalapenos. Basically, that's like three. If we're making large portions, though, guys we'll do fish sticks and we just put it back in a can like this throw it in the refrigerator it keeps for a little while okay and the next thing is some fresh dill love the way this stuff smells all right the fresh dill all you're gonna do with the jalapenos you don't have to cut them up to dice them up too small um, because you want to have that crunch and that fresh um, pepper flesh is very crunchy okay now we're also going to put some capers in there and i'll dice those up and then i didn't have any pickles but i like the sweet pickles because it adds you get the dill you know you can use dill pickles and skip that but i like the fresh dill but the sweet gives you a really cool flavor so let me get to dicing the rest of this stuff up you want to use just plain greek yogurt okay None of the flavored, and you don't want to get fat free. That's not going to work for you. Now we're going to use equal parts of that and mayo. Roughly equal. It's not critical. And any of these ingredients, you can use as much or as little as you want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our jalapenos, our dill. I got onion, any kind of onion, and then capers. And we're just going to throw all this stuff in there. Just like that. Now, one other thing we gotta add, that lemon I just beat up. You can use as much lemon as you want. I would say a half of a big lemon is plenty. I like, like I said, the sweet relish. Good shot of that in there. It's a nice, it's a different flavor. The jalapenos and the onion are gonna give you the crunch little bit of Worcestershire sauce not a ton a couple shakes like that boom baby the magic sauce just gonna put a little bit of this stuff on the more you put on obviously the warmer it is we didn't put any seeds in, in there from the jalapeno so that's where we're gonna get most of our heat and the seasoning on the fish Last but not least, you wouldn't happen to have any Grey Poupon, would you? Maybe that's an old commercial. You guys might not remember. That's a long time ago. All right, now we're just going to mix it all up. I know it smells good. After you're done mixing it, you want to put it in the refrigerator to let it all blend, okay? So you mix it really good and you're gonna let this stuff sit for at least a half an hour. That's why I'm doing this first. And I'm gonna tell you what, two days from now, it's gonna be even more flavorful. So if you wanted to make this a couple days prior and then put it in a can like that, you'll be good to go. Cause the longer it sits, the better it blends and the stronger the flavors are, it's amazing. You just got a one gallon bag with flour in there and we just we always make a bag of seasoning like this and we'll use it for a long time i just roll it up when i'm done make sure there's no extra fish in there put it in the refrigerator and uh yeah we just keep reusing them now we're just going to use some cajun seasoning 
all right doesn't matter what kind whatever you prefer we're going to put quite a bit in there there you go take a peek might need even just a little bit more because i got a lot of flour but we'll use this for our fish fingers when we're watching football any of that stuff let's try that see how it looks mix it all up we're going to use these rolls right here hard rolls they're fantastic and what i'm going to do is i'm going to size the fillets up to make them about that big that way they don't shoot out of the sandwich because sometimes with the tartar sauce and stuff it gets a little bit slippery and they want to fall out so okay I check for pin bones too i'm good that's going to be one sandwich that's going to be one sandwich and that's going to be one sandwich now we're just going to dust them before i do that though i mentioned our friend lisa um just want you to know lisa we're praying for you um i know she she had kidney cancer and uh she suffered a lot of damage um so right now uh, as far as i know they haven't uh, talked about dialysis yet but it could be a possibility and that kind of hit home with me uh, my brother suffers from uh, kidney disease he's he had a transplant, my goodness, it has to be 30 years ago for my oldest brother, Chris, gave him a kidney. And then I was fortunate to, uh, when that kidney, it, it did well for, like I said, 20, almost 30 years. And then uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to donate a kidney to him. Uh, and, it's, and it's an amazing process. I mean, come on what an awesome opportunity for anyone that you love or someone that you don't even know you think about that if you just sign the back of your license saying donate i'll give you an example if on the back of my license i say i will you take whatever you want of me just think of what my kids are going to think when i'm gone if something horrible happened heaven forbid but there'll be parts of me keeping other people alive my my kids will be like yeah my in a way parts of it he's still here so and what you could do for other families you think about that I don't know that's just something I've always wanted to talk about because I, I've seen it firsthand okay what it can do and how much joy uh, it can bring to a family to have a loved one that's still with them that otherwise wouldn't be so I just want to throw that out there guys anyways we're praying for you Lisa Okay, guys, let's get these dusted. I'm just going to throw them right all in there at once. Zip it up. And just shake off the excess. Set them right back on here and let them sit. Look at those bad boys. You ready to eat these, Jane? Mm-hmm. You're going to delete this footage and then I'll have to do it again tomorrow? Maybe. No, you will not, young lady. I love this stuff, guys. I know I talk about it all the time, but it's the bomb. It, it has a much higher burning temperature. I know I've said it a hundred times. It's just a lot easier to cook with. One other thing I wanted to ask you, if you could leave it in the comments below, if you like to see the fishing videos and then doing the the cooking portion separate i would really love your feedback on that i mean it's two videos and maybe we can get more people to watch you know if they're more into the cooking but i, I don't know maybe i'll lose some that just want to see the fishing uh, on those videos but i know one dude it's not going to bother Sh what is it shiano s-h-a-i-n-o v-h you know who you are and I am just going to apologize for your wife because, to your wife, because guess what? Now we're feeding your addiction even more. So that's an inside joke for you that don't get it. That's okay. He will. All right, guys. Shut this off. I'm just melting that butter. Our oil should be ready to go here in just a second. Let's see what it sounds like. 
I'm gonna start with the thickest pieces first. Mm, that's about right. Keep them moving so they don't stick. And let those go for a few seconds and then I'll put the two thinner ones in there. It doesn't take much to cook this stuff. I mean, look at how fast it's turning. But I do want it long enough to get that crisp. In like two and a half, three minutes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See how it's starting to fall apart? It doesn't take long, especially for the thinner pieces, guys. It's, it's critical that you, you don't need to cook, cook it for very long. A couple minutes aside is probably good. With the thicker ones, maybe a little bit longer. Oh my goodness, you guys smell good. Here we go. We're just gonna slide them around in that butter. That pan's nice and hot. Now you can see I keep them separated top and bottom. I'm only gonna fit two in there at a time. We're just going to put them on these paper towels, get rid of some of that oil. Those are definitely ready. You can see that's the bloodline side, that's the non-bloodline. All right, guys, so I'm going to use purple onion. That's what I call it. I know if you're new to the channel, it's, it's just a problem I have. That's what I do. I call it purple onion. And then Boston lettuce. Why Boston lettuce? Not only because I'm from Boston, well, Massachusetts, but because they're perfect. Look at the size of them. They fit right on a bun perfectly. Can't go wrong with that stuff. I'm gonna make yours, okay, baby girl? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do you like a lot of tartar, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to use my right hand. Not so good with my right hand. I'm kind of ambidextrous, but you see, I switched right back to the left. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Yum. All right. So this is your bottom. This guy right here, oh yeah, the meat's already falling apart. The thin one. We'll top it with some onions. Piece of lettuce. A nice slab of tomato. And then come over the top. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. All right, let's see what that thing looks like. so it doesn't fall out of there. All right guys, before she taste tests this thing, we're gonna just say grace. And uh, just, just, we're thankful. We're thankful for the fishing trips and getting out there, getting home safe. And we're all healthy and we have just a lot to be thankful for. Beautiful family. So anyways. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of your many blessings, dear Lord. Um, we ask that you will uh, forgive us of all of our sins, thought, word, and deed through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who 
died and made it possible that we can all have eternal life. Um, and we ask forgiveness of those sins, dear God. And in Jesus, your son's name we pray, amen. Okay, you ready? That looks pretty yummy. I think I'd eat it. I know I would. <laughs> See the crunch? That's nice. Crunchy bread, crunchy outside of the fish. Yeah. No, I'm gonna hide this memory card. Don't even go there. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait till you see the next recipe we got. Yeah. See you in the next one. We're out.